you approach a game like uh, this one, we're knowing that you got the Kentucky series right behind it. With the well, pitching. in our game, good question, an important one. But in our our sport, I should say, you have to play the the next game first. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't worry about what you got beyond that. And uh, uh, it's important for us to go over to Hoover and play really well. We need to do that for not only the record, but for our for our confidence. We need to play well tomorrow night. On the pitching, you're going to break it up, kind of. Couple of as time. much as I can, yeah. yeah. We will see several guys pitch tomorrow. You know, Thursday off, and we'll have everybody ready for uh, for Friday. Do you know who will start it? No, but I will this afternoon, and, and uh, Pipes will get it to you. Yeah. What's it gonna be like for you heading back to Lexus? And I don't know how many times you've been back up there since you left, but uh, what's that feeling's been like? You know, playing against a lot of your former guys that you recruited. Well, we we played against them last year, so we've you know had the initial meeting there, and. Um, It'll be good, you know, but but really, it's um, and just to be really honest, it's about winning the baseball game, you know. And you'll see some friends and uh, good relationships up there, and uh, it'll be nice to see some of those people. That's for sure. And proud of what some of the kids have done that we've we, we recruited when I was there. But you know, it's uh, I've already gone through that part of life, you know, having been at Kentucky and going back to Gainesville. And done those, and so you know, I think um, uh, I've been coaching long enough to to uh, you maintain those relationships. The relationships you have with those people are really important, whether it's players, administrators, bosses, coworkers, colleagues, coaches of other sports. You know, those things are all intact, and they're good, and they're valuable, and they're um, they're precious. But you got to go win baseball games, you know. So it, it'll be like that. It'll be about winning baseball games. Yeah. Hey, Gary, how important do you feel like the additions of J.P. and, and Zach have been for bridging the gap, I guess, from those guys? Well, I think those guys are getting better, and I think it's pretty obvious as you, as you watch. You know, they, they got used to maybe some new roles for them. I think they got used to uh, a little bit different level of competition on the weekends. You know, they're both at good schools, but, uh, you know, our league is our league, you know, and uh, once you get past week two, it gets ratcheted up pretty good in, in our league in terms of the – Margin of error gets decreased. Uh, the skills and the concentration keep getting better, and those guys are uh, are doing a great job for us. And so to have the two older guys that you can count on—they're not the only two that we have—but to have those two guys has been really important for us, and it's been really uh, it's been fun to watch them get better. When you were working with them in the fall, what are some of the things you could do to kind of help guys transition to an immediate one-year got to produce now kind of role? Well, that part's not a lot different than working with anybody or um, getting a junior college kid in, the thing that's different is these guys have, have got a history of success, you know, a, a reservoir that they can tap into a, of a lot of success prior to being here. And, uh, you know, JP had pitched uh, mid midweek games against people in our league, and, and so he knew some of that, and I think uh, Zach had as well. But uh, the first thing you do is evaluate what their skill level is, you know, and see where you think you can address some things and help them get better you know, soon. Uh, and then the next thing is, you, is find out where their, uh, where their mental game is and their ability to, to get to a point of uh, concentration, a focal point. Do they know how to play the game of pitch at a time? Are they willing to play the game of pitch at a time? Um, and start to address, you know, some of the things that you might notice in terms of their, their pre-pitch plan, their inner dialogue, how they address the mental part, how they handle failure. You know, typically an older guy handles success just fine, you know, but the failure piece, you know, sometimes you can address things with kids and help them uh, uh, have an honest evaluation of where they are when things don't go their way. And if you can, if you can access that conversation, then you got a chance to help them. But JP in particular has been able to log you a lot of quality innings out of the bullpen, three, four innings at a time. Why not just take him to some of that guy? Well, good question, and certainly you think about that stuff, Will, all the time. You know, um, what I would like to do is have as strong a bullpen as we possibly can, and that that's my motivation. Um, are you willing to try different things at times? Absolutely. Did I feel pretty good after watching him get the first six guys out on Sunday thinking that he might be able to ride this thing out? I sure did, and I liked it, you know. Um, It's just a way of going about it, you know. And as as a guy that determines who pitches when, what you can't do is put put yourself in a position to lose the game in the first three or four innings. 
you know, I, I think we all understand that, and that's why JV came in in the second inning. I felt like the game was kind of on the line in a way, knowing that we had scored seven runs in the eighth on Friday night. I mean, that doesn't, you know, that does, that part doesn't escape you, but you also know that that's not easy to do. You know, throwing crooked numbers up in the eighth and ninth inning in our league is a tough thing because sometimes you're seeing a pretty good arm. You know, but we were able to do that. And so it's the balance of how confident do you want your club to be with based upon who's coming in, you know, and you covered us last year, right? You know, how, how did you think our club responded when we brought Spencer Price in? You, you enjoyed watching that, right? Sure you did. We all did. It was a great feeling and all that. And, and so you're trying to create that type of a feeling when you go to the pen bringing guys in. And sometimes that's a lot easier to say than do. But right now, with as good as JP is pitching out of the pen, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to change that role. I like having that feeling of him being down there. We used him twice on the weekend, you know, and you can't always do that. But if you can keep that first one under 30 pitches or at 30 pitches and you give him a day off, then you can't, you got a chance to go Friday, Sunday with guys. And if, if they're effective, boy, it's a huge shot. Doesn't guarantee a win, but it, it gives you a shot. And so that's kind of my thoughts there. The other thing I think is those two guys that we, we threw at the front of the game on Sunday, you know, they, they haven't been as consistent as we'd like, but they've been good for us. Yeah, they have, you know, and you, you try to stay away from moments in our game where it's a coin flip, who you're getting, whether you're talking about can the guy pick up a ball and turn double play, can he give us a quality of bat, or can he get somebody out in the bottom of the strike zone. You know, you'd like to know what you're going to get, and so we can improve in that area clearly, you know, with our Sunday starting pitching. But those two guys have, have pitched well enough for us that I'm comfortable running them back out there. I don't know, you know, I can't guarantee that you're going to get the – the guy that you want all the time. Nobody can in our league. You guys saw what happened last Friday night in our league. There was a good starting pitching all over the place that, that had rough goes. And whether that's uh, week eight or whether that's uh, finals week and a little fatigue, you know, uh, I, I don't know. And I don't think any of the coaches do. If you do, we wouldn't, we'd hit it off of the front of it and it wouldn't happen. The other thing, and I know I'm getting long winded on that question, but uh, the other thing that I think about is, um, those guys are good enough to pitch successfully for us, and we need them to do so. My job is to help them. Your years at Kentucky, you've taken a lot of pitchers up there, both your own and the others in there, and seen a lot of good pitches leave that yard. It's a very offensive, you know, friendly place. I mean, how do you coach your pitchers to handle a place like that? It's just that they're going to get hit at some point. Well, I, I think um, the determining factor in how you talk to the pitchers always comes back to we're going to be positive mm -hmm. and if you can start with positive then you can get to aggressive mm -hmm. you know um, and you just have to have a real conversation mm -hmm. you gotta keep the ball down mm -hmm. you know and you can't get sloppy up and away to a right-handed hitter there the way you can in some ballparks mm -hmm. you know there's, we play at certain ballparks or in certain weather conditions where up and away is just not going to leave the yard mm -hmm. you know that's the way it is uh, and that's just not the case in Lexington, you have to you have to keep the ball down. You got to be able to utilize both sides of the plate, you know. And once again, then you go back to the absolute basics: get ahead, stay down, both sides, secondary, change speeds, attack. And if you can do those things, a lot easier said than done at times. You guys watched this this weekend, but uh, that's where you go, and that part doesn't change, you know. So those will be the things that we talk about. What's been your impression of working with Jay Coach this year? My impression of Jake, that's, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, I, Jake is a extremely good baseball person and an even better person, a better, a better human being. Honest, hardworking, team player, great attitude, upbeat, positive. I've enjoyed it. Sorry to put you on the spot with that, but just yeah. you, you've had a lot of younger hitters perform better throughout the course of the season. I was just trying to get a gauge on just what his role has been in that development. Substantial, yeah. He's he's our hitting coach. He's in charge of the stroke, and uh, Coach Brown helps out a lot in that area as well. Uh, but Jake has done a tremendous job, and it'd be hard to say anything else. And in fact, you'd be disingenuous if you offered it otherwise. I mean, he's done a great job. It's pretty clear if you're watching us play baseball that we're getting better offensively. And there's other parts of the game that we're getting better at as well. Um, and within that. Even though you continue to get better, that doesn't mean that every game or every week, weekend is another step up, man. Sometimes there's a plateau or, you know, hopefully a, 
a uh, shallow valley in there uh, somewhere, but uh, Jake has done a good job, and I think we've got other, as you mentioned with Zach and JP, I mean, we've got some other parts of the, the, the team that are getting better as well, but certainly our offense is one of them. You're talking about how the offense have gotten better on this, and, and you've seen that from the top end, what some guys with the, have been doing behind you there, especially the freshmen. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of guys are hitting the ball really, really well. Uh, Elijah had a big weekend, so it's not just the freshmen that are, you know, getting it done for us. But uh, Rowdy had a great re or weekend, and um, Tanner Howell, I mean, you know, you can keep going. But uh, guys are starting to click hitting, and, uh, you know, and we've had just a lot of big at-bats, mm -hmm. a lot of big at-bats this weekend that really could not have gone our way. Seven runs, six inning Friday night. It was mm -hmm. huge. And that was a list of good at-bats. It wasn't just one or two. Why do you think the at-bats have been better? Oh, what was that? Why do you think the at-bats have been better in um, the past like, month or so? I know, I know you keep hearing approach is, you know, mostly the answer, but it really is. Um, early in the year, you know, the approach was set to look away, you know, and, and react inside. But, you know, it's, it's really starting to click for the guys and, and, and myself included. Um, you know, we all get pitched a certain way and, and, you know, you can have a scouting report and then this is how they're going to pitch you. But if you don't execute it, you, you're just, it's not going to go your way. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's starting to really come together really, really well, and the freshmen are starting to buy into it. And, you know, me and the older guys are starting to buy into it as well. With two weekends left, what's kind of the approach of this team, you know, as you finish out the regular season? It's win every game. You know, we just take each game one by one. We got a game to win tomorrow night in Hoover, and then, uh, then we're going to head on up to Kentucky and try to win the series. Gary had just mentioned something along the lines of how the team feels <laughs> confident, like when a guy like JP Franz comes from the bullpen takes the hill for you guys like late in the game or early in the game if there's a you know high pressure situation how much is that like what what is to that i guess like is, is that something that that is sort of tangible yeah i mean it, it's it's a confidence thing you know um, jp came in that game against a and and struck out like nine of twelve you know um, you know whenever you get a lead and you know jp comes in you, you got a good feeling he's gonna shut him down um, you know, the biggest thing is you know whenever you do take a lead in baseball, that next half inning is extremely important to go out there and get a zero. You know, that is huge momentum swings. It's like uh, Alabama takes the lead in the bottom of the first, and we come back in the top of the second, score five runs. The getting that zero after that half inning taking the lead is extremely important. So that's why it's really you know awesome to have a guy like JP out of the pen that's just going to come in and shut someone down. Got an interesting week offensively because you're playing, playing in a big park, which is a line drive gap kind of park, and going to Kentucky where balls can just leap out of the yard at any point. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do players ever think about that? I mean, I'm sure it's, it's definitely going to cross some kids' minds, and, you know, it, it definitely will. But the, the key this weekend is you act like it's the right field is not even there. It's a really, really shallow right field, but you just got to act like it's not even there and just stick with your approach. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you keep hearing that word, but it's going to be really important to do that. We saw you play through a broken hand last year, but it's like you hurt, hurt your hand against oh, Alabama. Yeah. Is you all right? Uh, yeah, I just rolled over it. It just jammed it pretty bad, but it's, it's fine. It's good. Even if Connor and Ethan aren't getting the first innings that they want, a lot of pitches, the way they recover from it and then just start stringing innings together like that, I mean, is that impressive to a, to a batter especially? Yeah, absolutely. It, it says a lot about just their mental makeup. Um, you know, both those guys you know, didn't have the start of their start mm -hmm. that they wanted. But they finished up really, really strong for us, and um, you know it's it's great to have those guys on the mound for us. You know, mentally they they're really, really strong, and um, you know you saw that especially out of Ethan. I mean, he had like one run in the first, one run in the second, and he just mowed them down for the next four. You know, we we really needed that. That saved our bullpen so much for Sunday.